Batman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Squirrel Girl. These are the characters that have stood the test of time. They've influenced countless generations and will influence countless more. And then we have comics like Cyber Rad that are lost to the mists of time. Hello everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. I've got another top five video for you. Today I'm gonna to look at the top five extinct comic book publishers. These are the comic book publishers that you've probably never heard of and the comic books that are lost to the mists of time. First of all, we'll start with Continuity Comics. This uh, was a comic publisher that was active from around 1984 to 1994. Basically famed comic artist Neil Adams created this company and his hand was in everything that these books published. Uh, he was often doing layouts, uh, drawing the characters' main features, and even inking. So this one is Cyber Rad. You can tell it's from the 90s because of this amazing hologram. Whoa, check out this robotic creature thing blasting Cyber Rad. The other superhero company was their motto for a while, and I honestly don't think that was the best way to have a motto. Interestingly, Cyber Rad did have a Comics Code Authority logo, but most of the continuity books didn't because they were for mature audiences. For example, Samari might be one of their more famous titles. Uh, this is Mistress of the Martial Arts. Volume 1 had nine issues and was published in 87. Then Volume 2 had only four issues and was published in 93. Check out this, uh, this warning here. Armor, sheathe your weapon, or I'll be forced to maim you. Try it. Doesn't get much better than that. So Continuity had a variety of titles you've never heard of, such as Ms. Mystic, Crazy Man, Megalith, oh, and Bucky O'Hare. So one out of 25 isn't so bad. This is the new stand edition, which wasn't very common since Continuity was more of a direct edition comic book shop type of publisher? Lost to the mists of time. Number four, Eclipse, publishing from around 1977 to 1993. This is Espers, the miniseries number two of four by James Hudnell and David Lloyd. Very realistic art, mature subject matter of psychic people, ESPers, and uh, the, gov the shady government organization that was after them. Eclipse was actually, has claimed to fame to be the first publisher of the first graphic novel, beating out Will Eisner's A Contract with God by just a little bit. That one was Saber, Slow Fade of an Endangered Species by McGregor and Gulachi in 1978. Perhaps the most famous title here with Eclipse was Fusion. This is a beautiful futuristic story about uh, augmented people, genetically enhanced creatures, all in the future. They're mercenaries. They're in it for the quick buck and with a cast of characters that really is memorable. Some would say, in retrospect, this was like Firefly before Firefly. I really enjoy this book because of Galachi and Dowling's art. Incredibly detailed, really nice. Galachi, famous for creating the Albedo Anthropomorphics furry anthology. And Dowling was also an independent uh, creator. Fusion ran for 17 issues from 1987 to 1989. Other titles in the Eclipse roster include various early James Bond comics, DN Agents, and the seminal Adolescent Radioactive Black Belt Hamsters in 1986. Number three, 
Now Comics. This was a publisher active from about 1982 to 1996, and they were pretty famous for having a lot of licensed titles. For example, they published comics about Married with Children, The Twilight Zone, Speed Racer, and Mr. T and the T-Force. Associated names include Harlan Ellison, Jim Steranko, and Dave Dorman. But here I want to show you Terminator, The Burning Earth, number one of five. This is actually Alex Ross's first published work in comics. Famed, hyper-realistic artist Alex Ross started right here in a Terminator series taking place after the original Terminator, but before T2. This was a series that lasted five issues in 1990. So this was a female Terminator predating the Terminatrix of T3 by many years. I love that NIL8. And it's got the classic Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator style here. But it's the Alex Ross painted style that really makes this book amazing. He did the covers and the interiors. I remember my brother used to read a lot of Ralph Snart, and that was also a now comics property, but lost to the mists of time. Number two, Epic Comics, which was actually owned by Marvel Comics. It was their more mature, creator-owned imprint. Active from 1982 to 96, it was launched by Jim Shooter, famous Marvel editor. Some big names here include Jim Starlin, Frank Miller, Mobius, Peter David, Steve Purcell. This is Void Indigo, a very controversial comic that never quite ended. It was canceled before it was uh, completed. I believe it was about to be four or six issues, and there was like a prequel one or two issues in magazine format or something. But uh, this was a very violent comic full of like a weird iconography and why is that angel banging void um, and it was actually refused to be distributed by diamond so diamond distributors are the biggest name in comic book distribution if your comic is not being distributed by them no one's reading it and this book was too weird too violent uh, too mature so uh, diamond didn't want to publish it it actually ended with two issues, Never uh, the story never completed, and, um, and I don't think we really missed anything. The more famous epic comic book was Akira. This was the American adaptation of the classic Katsuhiro Otomo manga, published in the U.S. in English, touched up, and colorized. Otomo himself had a hand in it, and Steve Olive of Ali Optics cut his teeth on this book, creating amazing computer colorized panels that superseded the original Japanese colorization. This book was published from 1988 to 1995, 38 volumes, telling the epic story of Kaneda, Tetsuo, and Akira. The last several issues had trouble being printed. Eclipse actually went under before it was fully published, but limped along enough until the series was published completely and then faded off into the mists of time. And the number one extinct comic book publisher is Pacific Comics. This was an independent comic book publisher from 1981 to 1984. It was actually based here in my hometown of San Diego, California. It was part of the early direct market, publishing creator-owned and independent books. It was home to the early work of Sergio Aragonés, Mark Evanier, and Dave Stevens. But old names were in there too. Steve Ditko and Jack Kirby did comics for Pacific. This is Somerset Holmes, a beautiful cinematic comic book that was sadly never completed. It was basically like a movie in comic book format a film noir about amnesia and murder. The panel layout, the colors, and everything was top-notch. And it was basically a comic book to sell a movie. The movie never came about, 
and the comic book was never finished, sadly. But the book I want to focus on is Star Slayer, The Log of the Jolly Roger. Now, this was an earlier Pacific book. Notice the, uh, the logo is different for the new era in comics for the outlandish price of $1 in 1982. This was a 34-issue series by Mike Grell, a Celtic barbarian in the far-flung future. The early covers featured a wraparound treatment. They go from front to back. And then we've got the main character with a lot of adventures, battling creatures in the future and such, damsels in distress, action adventure, and good realistic art. But the reason I want to focus on this book is because it features early appearances of a few seminal characters. Yes, Star Slayer. Unfortunately, that's not much to, to write home about. Issue number one in the back has a full-page pinup of The Rocketeer, first cameo appearance. And then issue two has chapter one of The Rocketeer by Dave Stevens. The Rocketeer has a special place in my heart, and he first appeared in full here in Star Slayer number two. We've also got early cameo appearances of Gru the Wanderer, another comic book character near and dear to my heart by Sergio Aragonés. So these early, long-forgotten comics featured some great cult characters by Dave Stevens and Sergio Aragonés. But sadly now, lost to the mists of time. So to recap, Pacific Comics. Epic Comics. Now Comics. Eclipse Comics. And Continuity Comics. Five comic book publishers that are extinct. But for a special time in the early 80s and 90s, they were an alternative to the caped and cowled heroes that permeated pop culture. If you were around for these comics, leave a note below. Tell me all about it. If you're interested in reliving these long-lost comics, head on over to eBay. You'll still be able to get them for not very much of an investment. If you liked this video and all of the great content I create, don't forget to head on over to patreon.com slash vmcampos. For as little as a dollar, you can help keep me funded creating great videos just for you. Or if you go for the $2 contribution, you'll get a vintage curated comic book sent straight to your mailbox every single month. What a deal. This has been VM Campos. See you in Neo Tokyo.